I'm Art Jenkins. I've uh, been working for the City of Spokane Valley about eight years now and dealing with NPDES Phase 2 uh, stormwater program there. Um, prior to that, I worked for CH2M Hill for a couple of years. Prior to that, I was at the Ada County Highway District dealing with a uh, Phase 1 permit in Boise area. So I've, I've got quite a few years of dealing with this stuff and uh, I've got someone who I think knows more than me uh, on stormwater, and it's Amy. Uh, we've hired to help us with uh, dealing with our phase two permit requirement for effectiveness studies. Um, and when it first came about on effectiveness studies, by the way, the re reason I'm wearing a suit today is because it's the only thing that'll fit me still and uh, makes me look better. And if I wear my grubbies, it, uh, I look terrible, so anyway. We'll see if this uh, clicker works. I don't know which way to point it, so we're going to try that. To the right? To the right? Yeah, I think we're going to have to. Hit the enter. You've got to turn it on. you got to turn it on. OK, technical help. Thank you. Either that or I can do this. This is not the presentation you are looking for <laughs> if you're not willing to work, if you're not, if you want the answers all today and you expect that I'm going to give them to you. Uh, if you already know all the answers and if you know that those answers are true, consistent, reliable, uh, and relevant to your own programs, and if you're not willing to work or expend resources to find those answers. So, in Eastern Washington, we do not like spending money if we don't have to. Uh, and yet, we probably need to to figure out if these things are working or not. This presentation will give you information on what Eastern Washington entities are, are, are talking about, working on, and interesting in knowing more about. Um, we're also uh, looking at finding answers for our stormwater programs that will provide improvement, you know, that'll make them better. And by that, and from our perspective, and I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of us, not necessarily all of us in Eastern Washington, that means, um, are we getting the water quality benefit for the buck? It's a bottom line thing. You know, we can spend a lot of money on a retrofit project, but if it makes more sense for us to do more sweeping and it costs a lot less, and we get the best bang for the buck that way. We're looking for that kind of a of an improvement. Uh, let's see here. So Eastern Washington effectiveness study started with our second uh, cycle of our phase two permit. There, um, to, we were to look at our management programs and practices under the permit to see if they are working or not. Uh, we were told that m most of these items in the permit, a lot of them, are presumptive in nature, meaning that they presume that they help water quality and that we needed to demonstrate how they do now help water quality if we do these practices. So effectiveness studies. Eastern Washington Stormwater Group is an ad hoc group of, made up of 24, well, 18 cities and six counties in Eastern Washington. Um, they were uh, asked to, they have to, <laughs> as part of their permit, either be a participant in one of these studies or a lead. They couldn't just sit on the sidelines. They have to do something with the information that if they participate in the study, at the end of the study, they need to be able to um, apply it to their own program somehow. So uh, in the early days, we had more than 40, probably 50 or 100 different ideas, it felt like that, on what we wanted to look at, you know, to improve upon. And we narrowed that list down to 23 studies and then added two more to the list and then came back again and uh, a year later uh, got it pared down to 14 studies, which we're looking at uh, moving forward right now into a detailed study design program. Um, so in the early days of MAN, somebody came up with the idea that we need to figure out how long something is and just to describe that. And so the king said, and I don't know this to be true or not, I'm just kind of 
it sounds good, right? The king said, use my foot. And so then invented the foot, right? We have linear feet then. We're kind of doing the same thing with effectiveness studies in stormwater. It said, boy, that's why it's fascinating, why it's fun, you know, for me at least. It's, it's a green territory. The bridges that are being built today, it was green territory 100 years ago on the knowledge and science that was being, it was being predicated upon. And as an engineer, I, I find it fascinating to look at, at new and creative ways to dealing with stuff that we just don't know about. Um, so anyway, going back to where the slide was, that was a tangent. Um, we got some gross grant money from Ecology, thank you very much, uh, to help us through this process of getting us uh, staged. And I, in more in particular, I want to go back to as well, why are we doing effectiveness studies and not uh, like in-stream monitoring or end-of-pipe monitoring? In eastern Washington, we have a very difficult time having any water come out of a pipe, especially if it's not in the middle of the night three times a year. Um, so try to chase down a storm that you're really going to be able to affect, to monitor and see if your program's working or not. Uh, that's a difficulty. And so we were able to convince Ecology, thank you um, for working with us, it, uh, to uh, just that we would do effectiveness studies to try to figure out what's working and what's not as an alternative to end of pipe monitoring. End of pipe monitoring also is very costly. Uh, it cost us early in Boise, it was like $100,000 a year per outfall, and we had five outfalls. And so that was like half a million dollars spent for the first five years, approximately, in that uh, monitoring. So that was something I knew that we could not afford in eastern Washington. And the, the direction we were headed was more of a western Washington slant which would have cost us more than $17 million to do over a four-year period. And it would have been impossible to get the, the numbers that you get in western Washington because the rainfall is different. It really is. And so that's why we're doing effectiveness studies. I spent way too much time on this slide. Uh, so we have this phased out into four or five phases um, because of that's how the permit is written and at the end of each phase is a deliverable. And so we're at phase 3A right now. I had to split phase 3A because of funding uh, issues uh, with the gross grants, but that's okay. Uh, Eastern Washington Stormwater Group is responsible or uh, individual participants and the leads are gonna be responsible for funding the next phases um, moving forward or finding funding for those phases. So they may go after um, ecology gross grants or national grants or other uh, sources. Uh, okay, so I've already kind of talked about the phasing, uh, so I kind of got ahead of myself. Yeah, so right now we're in detailed study design proposal, uh, and um, that, those are due by the end of June of this year. So we are right in the middle of it. In fact, if you want to go out and you want to give us a comment on one of our studies that we're doing, We'd love it. Uh, you go past, you know, kind of down where the breakfast was served this morning, right in that area. Uh, all of our posters are, are, are set up, and we'd appreciate your comments. Uh, we'll take them through next Tuesday. Now is the easiest for you to go and read up and, and uh, provide those comments. Uh, after we get done with the design proposals, the individual study uh, leads, uh, those that want to uh, take theirs to the next step. We're only required to have eight from Eastern Washington, and we have 13 out there represented right now. So that kind of gives you an idea that, um, and I believe we, all, we already have seven that are on uh, line to submit their detailed study design proposal by June 30th. We, we're looking for one more. And I'm hoping it's not City of Spokane Valley, but. Uh, quality assurance project plan would come next. So after Ecology looks over the detailed study design proposals, they'll approve those or not. Uh, they'll give us their comments uh, or not, and we'll uh, you know, get them revised as necessary or go right to the QAP stage. And uh, then we have a certain amount of time to do the uh, quality assurance project plans or QAPs. 
and then we'll conduct the studies after that. There's timelines on all of this. We're looking at a number of years uh, that were required over the next few years to do all these studies. Um, and then report them the, the findings. Uh, that's a repeat slide, sorry. This is just my standard slide I use with all of the uh, politicians and such. It describes the whole darn program on one piece of paper. Um, and uh, so we're in 3A, which is right in the middle of the whole thing. Um, and how will the selected studies be implemented and data collected? That's kind of where we're at, the questions that we're answering. Um, the previous questions were, you know, in phase one was what can be done and how much will it cost? Because cost is everything in eastern Washington. Um, second phase was why, what is important, who will do it, and how will it be paid? And uh, uh, we're in the third phase now, so, and then after that, the question that will be answered is what are the results and recommendations? Okay. Um, now I'll turn the time over to, one of the things uh, I, I need to do a little preface and in, introduction here. Um, Amy, uh, when we were, we, uh, before I talked about Amy, uh, <laughs> when we got into this we said we're going to have a bunch of these uh, effectiveness studies. Uh, I don't want to look through one and have to, you know, go to uh, one section and it's slightly differently titled than another section on a different study. And so we wanted some consistency in this. We wanted to set up a template or some kind of a standard format that we would also to have a scope of work to um, give to consultants potentially in the future. You know, having a standard format would help with that uh, consultant discussion as far as not just select, uh, but uh, negotiations on hours and what the scope would be. So this is kind of outlining for that. And uh, we talked to Ecology and they liked that idea so we, we used some of our grant funding uh, to look at this. When we got into it, we thought we were just going to be doing structural BMPs and then everything else. Are you going to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. You I'll, I'll turn it over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we discovered we needed actually not just structural and everything else, but structural, operational, and education and outreach because they all have different uh, types of ways that you collect the data and uh, that you're going to uh, analyze that data. And I'll let Amy take over and, and introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? Okay. Um, How long have you been in this? <laughs> My name is Amy Navikas Brash. I think I know quite a few of you here. Um, I've been a stormwater engineer for over 20 years now. Most of my career was spent at WashDOT. Um, some of you attended the trainings that I did for some of the highway runoff manual or hydraulics manual training. So, um, or I reviewed your work <laughs> during the, um, if you submitted something for work you did at WashDOT. So, um, after a little bit of doing that, I decided, I don't know, I had a kind of a crazy moment, decided to go get a PhD and quit a really good paying job. <laughs> so I did that, left WashDOT in 2012. I'm still working on my PhD. I'm trying to hold the world record for how long you can be a candidate with actually advancing to the PhD status, but I'm very close, almost done. I will finish. Um, Jim Eakins is laughing because Jim and I are both students at U of I and both are taking forever to finish, but in good standing with the university and will finish. So um, anyway, so um, I've actually been working on the effectiveness studies since before they started. I was part of the roads and highways subgroup, which then spun out, kind of gave the ideas for the effectiveness studies had the opportunity to work with Herrera in phase one on some of the education and outreach proposals that they did and then now moving into two in the work I did with art on the templates and now into 3A where we're writing the detailed study design proposals. Um, so as Art said, as we got into the studies, what we noticed is we had three different classifications of BMPs. We had structural BMPs, operational BMPs, and education and outreach. We've got three different genres of research that are completely different. And so moving into 3A and 3B, when the permittees are required to develop a detailed study design proposal, as well as a quality assurance project plan, the guidance that Ecology had available for developing those quality assurance project plans was really most closely aligning with structural BMPs, as opposed to some of the other studies that we have. And that, can, that created a little bit of a challenge moving forward primarily because the variables or the data that you need to collect 
in order to measure effectiveness is different depending on the classification of BMP. And with the data being different, so are the variables that will influence quality, and so are the areas where you can actually have some type of error associated with that data collection. So at that point, we kind of realized we needed something more to get through the next phase, especially consistently for everybody working on the proposals and the QAPs. So the goal with developing a quality assurance project plan template, there's three of them, was first to define what's required in the proposal versus what's required in the QAP. And the goal was to waste no time. We don't like to spend a lot of extra money over here. We don't want to waste anything. So the QAP template actually is for a full QAP. But there's areas where you'll find a box in the document that says, for the proposal, this is all you need to do. If you actually decide you want to use it and you don't have a proposal, just delete every box in the document and you're good to go. You won't have to worry about that. The other goal with the QAP template was really to address those conditions and those differences that are unique to each of the BNP classifications. And when we started this process, we also didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Ecology's already developed guidance for developing a QAP, for some guidance that's in tape for QAPs as well. So we started with that and built upon that and then really kind of separated out for the uniqueness of the different studies. Oh, um, before I forget, um, Art has the QAP templates on his website for the City of Spokane Valley. There's actually four documents. The first one is an introduction to the effectiveness studies in the QAP templates, which is shown on the left. And then the, the three um, QAP templates are also posted on his website, too. How did you change pages? Oh, Enter. OK. So I'm just going to look, talk a little bit briefly about each of the three classifications and kind of the unique aspects of those. Um, with structural BMPs, when you think about that, it's probably the t first thing that comes to mind when somebody says stormwater BMP. It's something that's constructed. It's been in the ground or fixed in a location. An example would be a pond or a swale, bioretention, permeable pavement. All of those are considered a structural BMP. And the goal of an effectiveness study for those would be to evaluate the runoff treatment or flow control function of that particular BMP. So the type of data you might be collecting with a structural BMP would be water quality. You might be looking at precip precipitation depth, the flow rate of water coming in from a rainfall event, and the, and the flow rate coming out of the BMP as well, those type of data you would collect. And data quality indicators, has anybody developed a QAP before? A chunk of the room, okay. So within the QAP, a huge part of that, part of it defines the experimental design, but a very big part talks about how are you going to maintain quality? What do you define as quality data? And how are you going to demonstrate that you collected quality data? So the data quality indicators for a structural BMP are going to be precision, bias, representativeness, completeness, comparability, sensitivity. And I won't go through what every one of them means because you'd all be asleep. But let's just, I'm going to pick one, and I'm going to show you the difference between the three classifications. So with bias, bias is a measure of the true, the distance between the true value and the measured value. There's some type of distortion between those two data points that you're looking at. And you're trying to minimize error by getting rid of the bias. One way to do that on a structural BMP study might be to calibrate your equipment. If you have a rainfall gauge, making sure that it's calibrated and correctly measuring data. That will help reduce the bias. With operational BMPs, um, this is going to be like street sweeping, catch basin cleaning, those type of activities. So the effectiveness study goal will be to evaluate the effectiveness of a practice or a procedure for improving water quality. We're looking at a completely different focus on these. Um, we have about three effectiveness studies that focus in this area. And actually, Art's going to go through each of them, so I won't go through those on here. Some of the data we'll collect will be the same. We might be collecting water quality as well. We might be collecting precipitation data. We might also be collecting sediment accumulation. This is different. We might also be testing our sediments to characterize the analytical content of the sediments itself and see what type of pollutants we have. Our data quality indicators are going to be the same for these type of studies. But we're talking about bias this time. What we might be looking at as well is we're also thinking about maintenance equipment. So we want to make sure that we're maintaining the equipment per the manufacturer's standards, because that could influence our data. Another area we could have bias is with the operator of the equipment. 
We want to make sure we're truly measuring the effectiveness of a street sweeping program, not somebody who's randomly doing something different every time they go out to sweep, because that's not going to give us good data. Making sure we have standard operating procedures and that they're consistently following them. So with education and outreach studies, these are totally different. It's like a whole new beast that's entered the world of stormwater. <laughs> um, with these studies, we're evaluating the effectiveness of a program, of some type of material, of a campaign. We're evaluating that to see how well it raises awareness of the public about the impacts of stormwater pollution, and also about the awareness of your behavior on pollution. So we're looking at something completely different. We have three studies classified as education and outreach. And when we're collecting data, it's very different. We're looking at survey data. We're going to write a questionnaire, and we're going to give it to the target audience and see what information we get back. We might have a focus group. We might have one-on-one -on -one surveys. We might have a web survey. We might be observing human behavior to see what people are doing and how they're reacting in certain situations. And with that, the data quality indicators were completely different. In fact, we started over. We went to a literature search and said, OK, what are the most common ways that the social sciences are defining quality data and came up with seven of them total. And that would include validity, reliability, objectivity, credibility, transferability, completeness, and integrity. We're thinking about completely different things. We're thinking about my bias as a researcher and making sure that I'm objective for one. But when I'm looking at validity, which is very similar to bias, the measure of the distance between the true answer and the measured value, I'm thinking about the instrument I'm developing. I'm going to develop a questionnaire. That's my instrument. And I need to make sure that I'm asking the right questions so that the data I'm collecting is truly getting at the answer I'm looking for and not some distortion. I can maybe be getting good answers to a different problem. So making sure I understand that problem and I'm doing a good job writing my questions. You ready? Yeah. So Art will finish. <laughs> if there's an empty chair next to you and you won't mind somebody sitting next to you, would you raise your hand? If you guys in the back want to have a seat, you can. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, but if you got back problems, you know, I understand too. So, okay. So uh, we went through a ranking exercise on study ideas, and I have to say that um, a lot of these ideas I love and I care about, and they're like my own children. And I don't like to rank my own children or prioritize my own children. I don't. I love them differently. How's that? Um, we deal with our children differently and we they don't come all at once so to go through this exercise to me was kind of um, I guess it was okay but I think people get hung up on oh that's your number one study and you need to do that please don't okay um, it was popular amongst most of us averagely Okay, and that's why it's in the number one spot. There's some of these studies that, uh, in, it, over on the far right, we looked at like the Quad Cities area, Tri-Cities plus uh, West Richland. Uh, it makes up the Quad Cities. They had a different um, take on each of these studies than say Spokane. And so this is uh, the order that came out of all of Eastern Washington. And uh, there are some popular ones. I won't, I won't deny that, but, um, I, you know, this was just because we had to uh, as part of our um, permit. So it's done. Um, I love my kids equally, just differently. Okay, please uh, go and take a look at the posters if you're inclined, if you're interested in one of them, uh, and, and uh, give us your comments. Because some of these have uh, not just statewide, not just regional or statewide implication, but they also have nationwide implication. One of the things we found out in eastern Washington was the first thing we wanted to talk about as a group was half of us thought sweeping was important to talk about. And so the first thing we talked about was sweeping. Oh my goodness. We, we, we discovered, you thought that um, the, the world was ending according to some to talk about sweeping first. And others, they were like, this is the best thing ever. We need to t look at this. Um, and it, it's just how diverse we are on the east side. We're not just different from Puget Sound or you know, uh, Vancouver. We're different from each other. Um, some folks sweep for hay. 
Some folks uh, sweep for uh, the dust that they uh, receive from Oregon, thank you. Some uh, of us uh, sweep for pine needles, uh, some for lots of deciduous, some for aesthetic reasons, some for air quality reasons, not even for stormwater reasons, because we have to, because of air quality issues. So um, I'm just telling you that uh, we're, we're very diverse on this side of the state, and so it makes for an interesting incubation pod for national studies. And I put that plug in. Um, go check out the posters. If you don't have time at the conference, uh, you can uh, check out our website, spokanevalley.org. Uh, go under the stormwater webpage or type effectiveness on the first page, and you should be able to find it. I'll show you later if we have time. Um, this first study is changing as we speak. We're having good discussions about this right now, and I'm really excited about where this is going. This actually has the, the possibility of being 20 different studies. And so we're going to uh, focus it down a little bit for this first round. And um, the idea is that hotlines, do they work? I mean, that's what it started as is the discussion in the group was, uh, we have this permit requirement to have a hotline. Does it really work? Is it, you know, or are we getting our information through other uh, relevant means? Should we uh, talk to ecology about changing the permit language, you know, in the next round? That's where this started. And because when the permit was first written, it was in the 80s, and hotlines were the thing. You know, 1-800-KTEL, right, to get your records. Uh, now, it's basically, uh, you know, my Facebook, whatever, Twitter, whatever. Uh, it's, it's amazing how fast uh, communication technologies have changed and the, the number of ways to do that. So we're going to just probably pare this down to one of those ways that people receive their information and take a look at it. And I'm really excited about that because we all have developed pro different programs in our jurisdictions, potentially. And so we need to evaluate that program. Well, how do we do that? And so uh, Kennewick is, uh, thank you, Kennewick, uh, has uh, volunteered to take this one forward and do a pilot study, case study, on how to do an effectiveness study on your ENO program, whatever that might be. So it, it'll be a lot smaller and a lot easier. Thank you. Oh, that's great. All right, so BMP inspection and maintenance responsibilities. This one, uh, how many have to deal with the homeowners that don't know uh, that they have a stormwater system that they're responsible for? Yeah. They didn't know or they, they claim that they don't know. And so uh, this study looks at that. Um, is that right? Or am I looking at the right one? Or is this Yakima's? That's, that's not Yakima? Okay, no, this is different. Okay, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Two, two of these are very close in, in title. This one actually looks at the private uh, systems. So this is uh, private BMPs. You know, how well are they maintaining them? Uh, and so what we're actually doing, and Yakima County is going to head this up, is they're going to interview uh, the municipalities, the MS4s that are already pushing forward on this, and ha what is working and what's not with dealing with your private BMP, you know, the private holders, the private uh, um, community, or uh, not communities, but private uh, uh, yeah, property owners. How are they, uh, how are the municipalities doing this work? So they're going to uh, do some surveys and some focus groups on this, it sounds like, and um, come back with some indications of, of best practices, what's working, what's not in the state. Uh, next is mobile contractor listed discharge education. So we touched on this yesterday if you're in the workshop, so I'll be real brief on it, but basically carpet cleaners, uh, painters, uh, you're a small cement guy, you know, that does a little bit of tile work, that kind of thing. Where do they put their drainage uh, water, their wastewater after they're done? Uh, a lot of us have had problems with that. Uh, how's uh, a certain program working to, to uh, and Wenatchee is going to be looking at the Dump Smart program, which they helped implement in their area uh, when it first came out, and they're going to see how well that's working with carpet cleaners, it sounds like. So, 
Uh, this is the one I was talk talking about earlier, owner awareness. So you got a homeowner, they've got a swale in front, they start to fill it. It's always the third homeowner, right? am I right? It's always the third one that thinks they got a better idea on landscaping. Had this issue, you know, and then they wonder why uh, February they call up and it's like, my garage is flooding. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you put this tree out in front you know, on an anti-swale called a berm. Stop that. So uh, how do you get the word out beforehand? You know, how do these folks know they need to read the stuff that they signed at the title report, you know, when they did their um, purchase of their property? Uh, we'll be taking a look into that. Mm -hmm. Street sweeping and catch basin cleaning comparison. So this is my good friend John Morrow in, uh, in Ellensburg is looking at this. And uh, he's gonna look at a paired study, uh, basically sweeping on one side of the street and not on the other uh, for a year and uh, see how much stuff he gets out of the catch basins. And then um, changing it up on, and going the other side of the street uh, the next year, so a two-year paired study, to look and see what's, what's uh, working better on sweeping for him. Seasonal differences, so this is one that I'm interested in, Spokane Valley, because we've developed a program of, uh, we sweep in the spring, we have a spring sweep, we have a winter, or a winter cleanup, and then in the fall we sweep, and then we do an arterial maintenance sweep during the rest of the year, is what we call it, except for the years that are um, uh, we have snow, which is every year. So, you know, December, January, February, March, we don't sweep as much. So the goal of this is to take a look and see if it's, uh, if it's really making a difference or not, our, our application of our sweeping program. Uh, this is one that I've, I've crossed out some of the words here because we're still working on it. Uh, and seeing where this goes, I want to take advantage of all the mapping work that we did early on and see how much of our, a lot of our water, especially in Spokane Valley, 98.5% of it goes to a UIC or an LID-like system. 1.5% go to a uh, surface water body. And so we have different regulations for underground injection and uh, versus uh, uh, stream flow stuff that we do with NPDES. Um, we want to take a look and see, are we spending a lot of money on, uh, I know in the LID areas, LID-like areas, we don't spend as much because we don't sweep those areas. They're curbless and they don't have drains, so we don't do storm drain cleaning. So I know it's a little bit cheaper, maybe, I don't know, I need to look at the, the overall evaluation. Long-term permeable sidewalk infiltration performance, we're starting to get sidewalks in, how, how well are they working? Uh, on the east side of the state uh, as far as um, long-term. Uh, and Richland was looking at this. We'll see if they get some test locations. There are a number around uh, eastern Washington now, but uh, they're looking at a particular project, uh, maybe in their jurisdiction. Catch basin retrofit device placement. So this is like basically looking at uh, these turned down T's or elbows that we've been putting in with our UIC program. They've been put in a lot of different locations as, uh, and do they work better in series? So having uh, one after another in your treatment train or in parallel? You know, I mean, do you have one, at the, one big one at the end of the pipe or do you have a whole bunch of them at each catch basin? So that's kind of describing that one. Use of non-vegetative soil with native soils. Nothing grows around here without water. And I'm running out of time. Uh, I think uh, biochar, we're looking at that with our swales, uh, putting that in our swales. Um, permeable pavement study, uh, City of Spokane is looking at that. Um, they're gonna do a big project on Sharp Avenue in front of Gonzaga and uh, look at different kinds of things that are going on with that, including durability with uh, winter snow tire uh, use, and they'll see how well this is uh, keeping up. So with that, I don't know if I, uh, I ran out of time, I ran out of slides, or what. It's not letting me advance, probably because I'm going over. Um, Sand filter vault, BMP, Spokane County is gonna work on this, and basically, uh, sorry, Filterra folks, uh, we're, we're actually looking at 
uh, taking the plant out because uh, we've got sidewalks where we can put something, but not a tree. Um, we don't have enough right away. So that's what we're looking at there. Media thickness study. This is looking at how thick the 60-40 mix and component study changing up what uh, maybe is in the, the new revised mix that's uh, going to be coming out um, in the next little bit from ecology. Search effectiveness on spokanevalley.org and you can find our web page. Uh, if you click on the top one that comes up, Eastern Washington Effectiveness Studies, and that's what you should see. Any questions?